Can I ask about like the three frustrations? Yeah. Like I think um that day we went to like visit Shifu at the at your place. Then uh, uh. my brother has never seen frustrations before. So he was like, Oh, we saw Nimonia Pai uh Then I was trying to explain to him like, oh, in Buddhism we um there's triple jam, then we uh, we, we pay respects to the Sankha because they teach us as if I explain like oh Buddha who's our teacher then Dharma is like Ta教的. then Sankha is like woman Buddha Buddha something like that <laughs> then I don't know if it's like the best way of explaining oh. yeah okay, okay. Uh, yeah that's my question thank you so much wait so what's your question <laughs> oh my question is oh, how, to, how to how to explain like uh, why we do Three frustrations. Like I think the way I explained it was like, oh, because you want to show respect to uh your teachers and uh, as in the triple gem and also like as is specifically for the Sangha is because like they follow the Buddha's teaching and they teach the Dharma. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh yeah, you more or less there. Uh so um <clears throat> The, the the act of paying respect um, can be due to a, a few reasons. One could be out of uh, convention. Yeah. So out of convention, when you hear, when you go, when you are with a large group of people, and when you hear, when there's a bell and everybody bow, then due to convention, you only bow down. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, so in a way it's like peer pressure. Everybody bow, okay, bow, yeah. <laughs> so, bow. <laughs> so another reason is uh, uh, because there is uh, because you encounter an object of uh, that is worthy of veneration. Yeah, that you 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 find that this object uh, has certain qualities. Object meaning can be a person, can be a physical object, yeah, that um, has certain qualities that touches you, that inspires you, uh, certain qualities that you look up to, yeah, either you admire, you respect, um, and it is, and of course, it, it should be qualities that you resonate with, yeah, so. Uh, so before you even pay respect, there should be respect in the mind, really, in the heart. Yeah, the prostration uh, is an expression of the respect. Yeah, and that's why when when students pay respect like that, don't pay respect this way. What kind of respect is that? You know how sometimes students mention. They like if this is where you are, right? Then, then they they are oblique. Then they, and then, <laughs> yeah, and then uh, who are? Uh, oh, she's not here. Okay, I don't mention who are. So that day, someone was doing invitation. Then the hand somehow like that, like that. <laughs> don't know why I sing it one. Of course, sometimes it's because uh, when you are not familiar with it, then you are stressed. And especially when the student have to do the invite or say some things. Yeah. So that's the ceremonial part. Yeah. So uh, the like uh, so as a result, sometimes the expression is a bit stranger. Huh? <laughs> yeah. But um uh, most of the time when we do it today, um, it is partly uh, convention and then partly uh, an expression of the respect. Yeah. Why do I say that it's partly uh, convention and partly an expression of respect? It is because in the Buddha's time, there's no such a thing as um, so someone making an announcement, okay, let's all pay respect to the Buddha with three prostrations. <laughs> 
you can look through the whole Pali Canon, the Chinese Mahana Canon, uh, all the different scriptures. I don't recall seeing anywhere anyone making any announcement. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it is a voluntary thing. What we see is um, like it says, and uh, at one time uh, at Sabati, the Buddha was uh, uh, going, uh, was, was touring the countryside. And then there, uh, some, some Brahmins uh, heard of the Buddha being uh, in town. So they decided to go to um, uh, visit him. For it is good to visit ascetics who are knowledgeable and so on and so forth. Then the, the way they describe it is very interesting. Then they say, and then this person came and then acknowledged the, the, the Buddha and then sat down. Uh, usually they will say, acknowledge the Tathagata or acknowledge the, yeah, the Buddha. Then another one come and then announce his name and then sat down at the side. Another person came and then paid homage to the Buddha at his feet and then sat down at one side. So you see different description. Uh, uh, I would presume that that's actually what happened, more or less, okay, more or less. Uh, but because it's recorded that way, so you, you can see that different people have different levels of respect towards the Buddha. It is not that the Buddha attained enlightenment, then everybody, wow, see Buddha cry, or then, wow. <laughs> ah, no. Yeah, so um, in the Buddha's time, it's not instilled. Yeah, paying respect is not instilled. So it's not a regimental thing, it's not structured. Um, this formal way of paying respect is usually um, when there is a very formal ceremony. Yeah. Like um, let's say it's a, it's a, like a grand puja, then there will sometimes be such a such a thing. Um, I find that the announcement is most commonly made in the Chinese Mahana tradition. Yeah. So because Ma Chinese Chinese like everything to be orderly. So even if you want to pay respect. Don't pay, pay at your own time. Pay together. <laughs> yeah. Like, it's like. Dang, dang, dang. Somehow have a sequence. Dang, dang, dang. So if someone go up faster, hey, why are you up faster? <laughs> that is, uh, I think, I think the, our ancestors are OCD. <laughs> you go to dependent tradition. They, the, the moment the rainbow tree come up, they, they all beep, 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 <laughs> and they do very fast. Of... Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but they, they do very fast for a reason. When they do it very fast, I, uh, I, I remember 20 over years ago, I was told that the reason why they do very fast is uh, it's part of their visualization that they, they, they want to very quickly. Uh, Go and leave it, uh, like something like very quickly uh, attain enlightenment and very quickly and come back to samsara and liberate center things. They don't want, they want to hasten the whole process. They don't want to they want to be energetic about it. They don't want to like a dilly dally take their own six time. Something like that. But then some some mahana Chinese mahana tradition then look at it as a bu zhuang yan. Before you <laughs> so you see Chinese Mahana when they do frustration, step by step, you hear one bell, tang, wen chin, then cannot come out. <laughs> hear tang, then come out. Then you want to bow again, cannot. Wait, wait, tang, okay. Then we must sing together. Tang, 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 tang. Then you want to come out, cannot. Hit very heavy, cannot. Uh, each, all the different traditions, no matter how they do it, they, they have a 
there's a reason for doing it that way. Yeah. So <clears throat> um, when Fast and Fast he went to India um, to um, to get the teachings. Chen Sang Dasi is not the only one. <laughs> there are actually a lot of other monks who went also. But no, um, uh, few, few, few um, go at such a large scale uh, or few retrieve so much sutras. trust. So Fa Sien Fa Si is one of the Lu Si. Yeah, uh, not, well, he's a very, one of the key uh, Vinaya master. So he recorded now uh, up to, if I don't recall wrongly, 18 different ways of paying respect. Yeah. So in the Chinese Mahana tradition, we adopted the Wen Xin and the, the Li Bai. So it's also recorded, Da Li Bai is also recorded. Yeah. Oh, and then the Gui Bai. Yeah. Oh, we also have the Chang Gui. Yeah. So we actually recorded, uh, he actually recorded a whole series, but eventually Chinese Mahana adopted three to about two to three ways of being respect. Mm. So uh, I, I think no matter how we explain, uh, people will always have the question mark, but why you pay respect to, to, to like, people feel more comfortable paying respect to a statue than a human being. <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know why ego <laughs> uh, it's basically ego yeah you pay respect to a statue the statue you don't know what is, what is inside ma. so you you feel better that you are paying respect to something unknown yeah or at least what it represents some divine being some god or some buddha for most people god buddha and, and god gods big g small g equivalent same same for most chinese same it's same yeah <laughs> yeah so when they prostrate to the buddha image they they have a bit of that fear why well, i don't pay respect on later the buddha will slap me or something <laughs> but you pay respect to a human being if let's say Sifu now are well, very old, uh, then got beard, then all white hair, all hair white, then then at the side got one got one uh, younger monk hold my hand, uh, then behind got three hundred monks, Lao He Sang, Lao He Sang, Man 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 Lai Man Lai, then want to bow down got three person. Hold me. <laughs> oh, then people see you. Oh, oh, that all song, right? <laughs> I remember uh, when I was uh, newly ordained and I was in Taiwan. It was very cute because I think about one month later, about one month later, two or, two or three other three other person uh, ordained, and one of them was a uh, was a very elderly person. Older than my sifu. <laughs> so the more he ordained, he wear the ropes. Oh, the, it's, it's very funny oh, because there was another senior monk who was with us. And then when people, when devotees see the whole group of us, right, all of them quickly will face him and pay respect to him <laughs> because he's, he looks very elderly. <laughs> like if Hongji now ordained, uh, then I go out with him. Uh, People will think I'm his attendant. <laughs> then, then if people ask Hongji Dhamma question, let's of course Hongji can answer also. But let's say Hongji has stayed, uh, then Hongji uh oh, then people immediately, wow, senior monk is different. No? See, senior monk, wow, really think so deeply, so compassionate. Don't anyhow answer one. No? Yeah, then if Hongji say, this one uh, a bit difficult. Uh, I, I can't answer. Then wow, this must be some very profound truth. Whoa. This you see, senior monk is different. Senior monk, very very, very humble. <laughs> I tell you, uh, your love, your love. <laughs> Wait till you, you will be a, a old looking monk, then you see how you will be. <laughs> 
because in the Buddha's time, this is what happened. Remember uh, when Buddha and Venerable Mahakashapa went back to the hometown of Venerable Mahakashapa, all the villagers pay respect, like was was very respectful and you know offer hospitality towards Venerable Mahakashapa. Yeah. Then the Buddha then knew that <laughs> <Jala. laughs> like that's how they're gonna learn. So the Buddha asked uh Venerable Mahakashapa in the Dhamma Vinaya. How does the uh, how does the junior uh, how does a, a, a student accord uh, uh, respect or reverence towards one's teacher? Yeah, or how does a junior accord uh, respect towards a senior? Yeah, then Venerable Mahakashapa, knowing the intent of the Buddha, turn around and then pay respect to the Buddha. And by doing this, uh, who is teacher? Who is student? Very clear. Then all of that. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is a teacher. <laughs> From this, we we this is one of the rare occasion I I we see the Buddha actually um, making such a statement. Yeah, very few. Yeah, the Buddha don't go keep on going around. Hey, like by by the stop some by like two by. Yeah, but it was because he saw that if the villagers, if the those from Venerable Mahakashapa's hometown, if they um, do not see that the Buddha is a teacher, they wouldn't have faith in his words. And not having faith in his words, they wouldn't land here. Not landing here, they wouldn't be able to uh, listen to the teachings. And not being able to listen to the teachings, they wouldn't benefit. Yeah. Not that Venerable Mahakashapa cannot teach, but rare opportunity to hear the things that can enlighten them then. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Uh, but uh, still I say, difficult for people to understand or accept. Yeah, because this one. <laughs> yeah. In fact, some students or some, uh, some, even some students who know me for years, uh, if they if they know me from classes, then when they meet me, they will be more likely to pay respect. If they if they just um uh, uh how do you put it? If they just know me um through other channels, let's say they see me for counseling or under other circumstances, they may know me for years, uh, but it is very hard for them to think they should kneel down. <laughs> But I also don't ask them, you know, you don't know, you don't know, that's a problem. <laughs> anyway, you are not learning Dharma from me. Yeah. It, it should be clear, right? <clears throat> because I would also sometimes talk about that I have classes. Yeah. But if you don't, if you know that I conduct classes and you don't make the effort or don't show interest to attend classes, I also wouldn't tell, like, hey, how come you don't? <laughs> yeah. I, I know a few students there. They know, know me for quite a number of years. Mm. Um, so rightly speaking, in Buddhism, we don't like force people to pay respect. Yeah. Uh, but uh, it, to some extent, disciples should. Uh, disciples should. Yeah. Otherwise, you 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 got disciple, then you meet teacher, then you hey, oh, oh. <laughs> Some like there, there are one or two, one, one, some, some <coughs> once in a while forgot to take the medicine, then see Sifu. Hey, Sifu. <laughs> of course, as I said, uh, respect is unseen, <clears throat> is a mental state. The expression is a different thing. Yeah. But if we if we are thoughtful, then um, even though our usual way of uh, express expressing our our how you call it our usual way of expressing ourselves is hey hello yeah and that's that's very um, natural to us but if we are thoughtful enough then we consider ah uh, because this person is not um, any Tom Dick and Harry it's not my friend and especially if this if is in front of other disciples or other non Buddhists. I should accord to this person 
the suitable manner of respect so that it instills in those who has no faith to have faith and in those with faith to grow and strengthen their faith in the triple gem and not not say not have the kind of attitude like no i i don't mean any any <laughs> any disrespect i'm like that one <laughs> uh, this is do you know why uh, this is called ego <laughs> yeah arahans if they don't know about a precept they may still do it you know as long as it's not defilement um, driven they may accidentally do something that the Buddha has said not to do. The difference between us and them is the moment they someone tell them, but the Buddha already set down this rule that we should not do this. That's the last time they do it. They will never again do it. Yeah. If the Buddha say cannot do it, they will not do it again. They don't say, no, I, I'm Araha, I don't have deformance. So I didn't do it purposely. Why cannot? <laughs> uh, so, Next time you want to find out who is Arahan, who is not Arahan, uh, see how they respond to this kind of situation. <laughs> None Arahans are a lot of excuse, a lot of, a lot of argument. <laughs> okay. Okay, uh, can I? Uh, have a normal day ahead. Normal, respectful day ahead. Normal, respectful, amazing day ahead. <laughs> Okay, bye-bye.